Hey everybody, I'm Seth. And I'm Sarah. And this is our project on echolocation. echolocation. So for our um, presentation, we're just going to talk a little bit about what echolocation is um, and then go into some of the sensory processes involved. Um, and then we're going to talk about what animals can use it and whether um, humans can actually use it. You know, Sarah, that's a great question. Echolocation is when an organism emits a sound and listens for the changes in the returning echoes of that sound. Echolocation is used for gaining info about relative position and spatial orientation and even identifying prey. This can also provide important and detailed information about the environment. So, Sarah, now that we know what echolocation is, what are the sensory processes of echolocation? It's a great question, Seth, and I'll tell you. So basically echolocation involves two parts. Um, the first part is when the animal actually emits a sound, um, and the second part is when the animal uh, receives and hears the sound that they make. So for the first part, um, the animal will make some kind of call noise, um, depending on what animal, that will vary a little bit. Um, and it's important to note that the call that the animal makes and the echo that they hear happen at different times, actually. Um, and the call that the animal makes really relies on frequency and intensity. So the more frequent the animal makes a noise um, and the more intense that noise is, the better the animal will be able to understand their environment around them because they'll receive more cues. So the second part of echolocation is when the animal actually hears a sound. Um, so hearing is a very important sense that is needed for echolocation. Um, basically the ear will listen for those echoes that the original call has made um, and the ear will kind of funnel those and process those um, so that um, the animal will be able to understand what's around them. Um, and it's interesting because animals that can echolocate um, are actually very tuned to be able to understand these calls. So an animal um, that does not know how to echolocate uh, will not be as able to understand those calls um, and process them in a way that tells them about their environment. Speaking of animals, these are the animals that can use it. Bats, dolphins, and many other animals. But bats, Bats use echolocation specifically to locate objects and object features in the dark because they typically live in caves where it is very dark. Echolocation in bats is made possible by specialized muscles that produce scream-like noise, <laughs> scream-like echoes, and the bats receive these echoes with large middle ear muscles. In dolphins, Rather than using scream-like noises, they use clicks. And these clicks travel differently underwater than in air. So now we're going to talk a little bit more about what echolocation looks like as far as humans. And we're gonna show you this video. Um, it's about a guy named Ben Underwood. Um, he's actually blind, but he has learned how to use echolocation as a human. So Seth, would you like to play the video? You know, Sarah, I would love to. At Sheldon High in Sacramento, 14-year-old Ben Underwood is a freshman like all the rest. Well, not exactly. In his first week, many of you have a guess that Ben has a secret. And you probably couldn't figure it out watching him in combat and karate class or hitting his mark in a pillow fight, <laughs> or zipping down the street on his rollerblades. Did <laughs> you get it when you lost your eyes? I was two, uh, two weeks before my third birthday. Finn had cancer in both eyes, but he discovered a way to beat his blindness. I started clicking, I was like, I press it, I, you know, I was like six years old. He realized the clicking sound he made with his tongue bounced off things around him giving him an idea what was there. Was it like seeing again? Pretty much, yeah. Ben says he can distinguish where the cars are as he cruises his neighborhood streets. 
Even though he can't see the basket he's aiming for, by listening for the distinctive echoes each makes, he can find the pole and backboard on a basketball goal and sink a basket. It becomes easy to forget the fan is blind. Now let, how else to justify my treasure when I put a couple of goals past it? Ah, you thought you so good. I am that. He is indeed. Ben beat me five to two. Taking a walk with Ben, I was amazed at what he could see with his ears. Well, there's a fire hydrant on the side and a car on this side. Like, is that no, that's a trash can or that's all I was here. That's a trash can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> Or a cycle of one of them. Yeah. Playing video games with his brother Isaiah can be a salt of noise. Ben can figure out everything that's happening just by listening. How can you even separate the sound? Because they got different voices. Nobody is going to tell him that there is an impossibility for him because there are none. That doesn't give you any breaks because you're blind, does she? Nah. <laughs> Why should he get a break? I can't get a break. His mother, Aquanetta Gordon, insists he should have every opportunity, but no pity. But he's blind. No, he does. <laughs> I mean, you know, to society he's blind, but that doesn't make him handicapped. He just can't see. Ben has much the same talent as the dolphins he visited at SeaWorld. The ability to use echolocation for turning sound waves to sense his surroundings. His clicks even told him to step around a fallen trash bin. I don't know how you do that. But the secret to Ben's success goes beyond his clicks. Your mother Gwinnetta has always told Ben he can do anything. Once he said to me, he said, Mom, man, I wish I could see. And then I said, well, Ben, well, look what you can do. I said, if we had a blackout right now, everybody has to follow you. Before I introduce you to Ben, we need you to please hold your applause so he can use his clicking. So um, for our last thing for our slide, uh, we're going to kind of teach you guys a little bit about how to echolocate, and you can do this 
really easily. Um, all you need is like a wall or a window, um, the video that we have that trains the use of the window. Um, and it's actually really helpful and really cool. Um, so we really recommend you guys participating in this activity. echolocation is very possible to do in humans as well as many animals. We thank you guys for listening to our presentation about echolocation. Hope you guys learned uh, a little something new about it and maybe even you too can echolocate. Our references. If you would like to read these, here they are.